from Happily Ever After etc and I am back to show you guys how to print and cut well not technically print because I've already printed um, but basically how to put together one of our digital inserts so I've printed everything out I'll show you in just a minute but here is hey Kayla how are you tonight here is one of our printable budget inserts all finished printed stapled cut ready to go so you can buy those you know in the shop ready to go put in a notebook but you can also buy them as a digital file as a pdf and you can print them and make them yourself at home so i'm pretty good tonight it is freezing in here and uh, i'm in my craft room and it is alabama y'all remember i'm in alabama and it is Freezing. I feel like I need to go get fuzzy socks. <laughs> but I just printed these. You may be able to hear my printer going because I'm actually printing the other inserts that go with this set. I'm working on the back to school notebook. Maybe by tomorrow we'll even have that. So you can see here's our budget insert. And it has these cute little icons for back to school and so basically what I do is you print them out just like you would any normal piece of paper you know file print print them on both sides exact same file and I print uh, the inside pages on a 28 pound paper you want it to be sturdy enough to write on and be able to withstand you know using every day but you don't want it to be super thick whereas the cover you can see the difference right like in those two sheets of paper the covers I print on 110 pound paper because you want that cover to really protect your inserts so basically I'm just gonna start putting this together and I'm gonna show you guys kind of how it's done so the first step is to take all your pages let's see how this is gonna work on camera because I'm a little further away than I'd like and you're gonna fold them now, I'm working with a B6 size insert, and so luckily, that fold line in the middle that tells you where to fold it is right down the middle. So that makes folding really is easy. And I would say for most sized printables, um, for traveler's notebooks, that's gonna be fairly the norm. You know, that's not the exception. So it's usually, you know, you fold right down the middle, but always check you never know if it's the wrong size or not and you'll always have those fold and cut lines so there's no reason not to check so I have eight pages I find that if you print eight pages that's usually a good amount for an insert it's not too thick but it gives you a nice amount to work with before you have to replace your insert and it's up to you, you know, with printable inserts, since these are themed, you can print new ones every month, change out your inserts every month, and have a completely new planner. Or if you're like me, you're a creature of habit, you find um, a design you really like, you can just take that insert out every month and switch it around. Um, so say you really like this budget insert, you put it together, you're using it, you still have half left, but you still want to change your whole theme at the end of the month. You just take it out and and move that insert. Don't let the hubby see the budget planner. He'll make you use it. That is how my hubby always was, Kayla. He decided that he needed Quicken. Is that the right software? And so he bought Quicken for the computer and he was all gung-ho and then I think after like a month he was like Quicken is is what? 
not as big of a planner as I am. But this works for me. There's lots of different budget inserts out there, but this one basically has all the basics. So you've got your bill column, the amount, because that's kind of important, due date and paid. And what I like is that it's all basically just a spreadsheet. And so I can put in a bill up here that's like, hey, pay your electricity, electricity bill, 58 bajillion dollars due on the first. I've paid it or I haven't paid it. Or I can go ahead and put like Hobby Lobby, $20, and that's probably switched. My power bill is probably $20 and my Hobby Lobby bill is probably like $58 billion. But you get what I mean? Like I like to keep these in my planner because you can easily put in like spontaneous bills or entertainment. Say you and the hubby want to go out to dinner one day. You just put it all on the budget because then it's all recorded. Because if it doesn't get written down at my house, it doesn't get recorded. It doesn't exist. And then at the end of the month, you're like, where'd all my money go? I don't know. So all I'm doing now that I have them folded is I'm putting them in pairs. I find that when you're cutting them, it's easiest to cut them in pairs. And I'll show you how. So basically, pair them up. Pretty self explanatory. Okay, so now we're going to cut them. I have this little cutting, cutting Betty from Fiskars. I just picked this up at Joann's and it makes cutting really easy. So, all I do is I make sure that insert is really lined up really well. And you're going to place it. And what I really like about this cutting insert, I have like a bunch of them, is that you can put it all the way up to the top so it's flush, move it over so that you've got that little cutting mark. I'll show you on this one, you've got your guides, right? So you make it flush at the top, flush up to that cutting mark on the side, and then it has this little like thing you hold down so that your insert can't move. So then you just cut it off. So then, going to turn it around and I'm going to cut on the other mark. It's a lot easier when you're not on camera, but we will make it work. I wasn't sure if that was clean, so you just go straight back through. So then, for a B6 size insert, I believe it's five and a half that you cut at, but we'll, we'll do that later. Typically, I'll cut kind of like assembly line style. I'll cut everything in batches. So first, I'm going to cut the top and the bottom. Biddy, my dog is here. Can you hear her? It's okay, Biddy. That way I don't get distracted and try to like cut the wrong dimension on the wrong side. Now if you're super like on top of it, then go ahead, cut all the sides at once. That is completely up to you. I find this works better for me. So we are on the third set here. We have the one more. So this doesn't even take that long. At least I don't think it takes that long. Everything is harder on camera, I know. I'm like, this would, it's like I have to look through my camera to see where the cut lines are, and I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> well, but, that's okay. Oh, my mom's off work, and now she's going to come yelling. I'm telling you, I need one of those on-air, off-air, like, light-up things for my studio, for my craft room, so that she knows when to be quiet. All right, 
So I am going to go ahead and fold my cover so I can do the top and bottom of it at the same time. And so for the cover, it's really the same process as the inserts, except that it's thicker, obviously, because the paper is thicker. She is screaming. I'm sorry, you guys. You're probably going to hear her at some point. And so you can use a bone knife if you want to, but I find if you just press it down really good with your fingernails, it works. So then we cut on those guides, same as we do for the front and back. I find with the cutter that if you try to go smooth and it's not working, don't try to force it. It will cause more problems than good. So just go a little at a time and make sure to just hold this bar steady. There you go. And that will make it straight. So now I'm just going to lay those out flat and see they are all the same size. So that's just what we wanted. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut the width. So when you do a, oh, a B6 size, this is a B6, they're five by seven. So you can see here, let me pull this one out. We're just gonna be a little wider now that we'll wanna cut basically this bit off. So I do the cover last so that you can make sure it works. So for the first one, you're going to go ahead and you're going to push it straight up to the top and you're going to cut it right on that five mark. And you should be able to tell, you know, you're cutting off the right amount. And of course my cutter is going to be extra fun on camera. So then what I find is that if you cut all four inserts, or double pages for your inserts, the exact same amount, your pages won't be cut straight down. They'll be gradiated. So I cut the first one at five, and then in between the five and the first little quarter mark here, the very first one, so technically that's like the 16th mark, I cut it right there. And I'll hold this up and show you. So you can see what I mean. So you'll see when I put those up side by side, it's just a teeny bit smaller. And I'll show you why we do that in just a second. So then this one, you're going to go just on the other side, that first little mark, and do just a teeny bit off there. And then this one, going to go all the way to that first uh, one-eighth mark and just always make sure that top is held tight up to the top okay so then if you held all of these straight you would see they're gradiated but that's okay because when you put them together the spines take up space so that's why we do that so we'll take the, the largest one, the one that's five, we put the second largest inside, then the third largest, then the fourth largest, and then when we close it, we're straight down, straight down the side. So that's the goal. And you can see that it works out because it's all of this, let's see if the camera will focus. There we go. It's all of this that takes up, my nails are dirty. All of this that takes up room that you have to account for on the other side. So, if you go all the way to the five, then the next one, I go right to the side of this first little mark, then to the other side, and then to the one eighth. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so then for this one, I always cut right to the other side of the five. And of course, 
if you're doing a different size, say you're doing a pocket size notebook, which is three and a half, it's the same concept, except, except, except you're going to cut the biggest one three and a half, the second biggest one three and, you know, right to the outside of that eighth. You get the concept. Okay, so typically the cover is going to go right to that five mark. But depending on how you folded it, sometimes having that little bit of extra space is good. So I always cut it just a little bit bigger and then I double check. Yeah, so that's perfect on this one. The last time it was just a little big, but on this one it's perfect. So we've already cut everything. So now we take all of our paper and we throw it away. We don't need this. This is all trash. And then I will get out my stapler and I will show you how to staple it and hopefully I can staple on camera. Also, I just walked to my trash can, so hopefully you guys could hear me while I was talking. Alright, so here is my long arm stapler. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them on uh, at Office Depot. I'll put a link below. My mom got this one at a yard sale, so it's extra fancy. <laughs> but basically, you're going to open up your insert, and you'll see here how those pages are gradated to the edge. That's what you want, and that's what makes them lay flat when you close it. So, I'm going to put this in, being careful to keep that perfectly even on both sides on that crease because otherwise it will be all messed up. And I am not the best stapler, so hopefully I can do this on camera. But basically you're gonna line it up. I line up the first one with the two lines here, right in the middle. And then you press down really good. And let's see if I did that right. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay, so see how that comes right out the the back and the front. I cannot believe I did that right. I can do it right now on camera, but um, it's kind of hard to see right now with the camera on the way. All right, so then I come down here. You're going to do the exact same thing. Make sure your pages are still even because they really like to try to twist when you're stapling. And just the littlest bit off will make that staple come through your front cover and it's after you've already cut it and everything, like, trust me, I know from experience, it's, it's very upsetting. All right, so there we go. That's what it looks like. So now your insert is ready to go. And you can put this in your traveler's notebook and you can use it as an insert. So let's see what time it is. How long have we been doing this? Um, let's look at my computer. So we've still got some time. So let's go ahead and I'm trying to think of what else to show you guys tonight. What do you want to see? What do you want to see? So let's just take a look at the inserts really close. And then tomorrow I'll show you all the, the little things. So this is one of our ocean inserts. It's the notes insert. And this one's actually free in the shop. I will leave that below. But it has different watercolor kind of textures at the top, which is really fun. And this is just a notes insert. So basically, I would say it's like a little journal, like if you wanted to use it as a journal you could if you want to use it as notes you can write whatever you want in there but that's the difference there between a pocket size and a b6 size so then let's go ahead and look at these closer since they're the only ones i have easy to reach and i'm not going to go back in the other room where my inventory is so here is one of our weekly inserts and you can see that it's a vertical layout which means, you know, you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the boxes go down from there. So 
it's perfect if you want to use stickers in your planner because the stickers fit right within these boxes. And if you don't use stickers on your planner, you should. So then here's the budget insert for the fall. I love that little pumpkin. And we have the same detail. And every month is different. Um, each one of our kind of collections is different. So this is the fall collection. You're seeing a sneak peek. I am working on the back to school insert right now. So this is going to be a back to school kit. This is our fall kit. So you can see that it has the little pumpkin. You've got that little floral detail on the paid column. And then we have our notes insert. So this is a B6 notes insert. This is a pocket size notes insert. So these files, you could make a B6 size or you could make a pocket size. And that's one of the best parts about a printable is that you can just make it whatever you want. So there's the notes cover. And then inside here, we just have all of our lines. And of course, the last one is our to-do insert. So again, we have that sweet little cover. This one has a watering can, which I love. And the inside has that floral detail again. And it has uh, both columns. I'm really excited about the back to school insert because it's going to be a dot grid on the first three columns and then a to-do notes on the right, which I think will be really functional for, um, I'm kind of aiming the back to school insert um, notebook at moms and moms who are really busy. So I think having those two different options is going to be very functional. I did just print our weekly one for the back to school, so I'll grab that real quick not put together yet because as you see I make these all myself they're all handmade but look at that cute artwork you've got a little globe a little lunch sack you've got a little artist canvas backpack you've got a book a book you've got football basketball I love this little unicorn planner do you see how cute that is so that it that's gonna be really cute it is very busy, so I decided to do white full boxes for this month. But I cannot wait until this is done. Maybe by the end of the day, maybe tomorrow I can show you the back to school one full setup. Maybe Sunday. We'll see. But I think maybe tomorrow we'll take a break from printables and traveler's inserts and we'll take a look at accessories. So I hope you guys enjoy. I hope this is helping the whole planner traveler's notebook aspect make a bit more sense to those of you who aren't familiar with it if you have any questions leave them below and i will talk to y'all tomorrow i believe i'm back at 6 30 tomorrow so i'll see you then bye